In this video, we are going to learn all about resistors, how they are portrayed on schematics, the different types of resistors, how to read their values, we'll look at some basic calculations to determine the size of resistor you need, and we'll look at some basic applications. Resistors are electronic components which have a specific and never changing electrical resistance. Resistors work by limiting the flow of electrons through a circuit. They are passive components, which means they consume power, but can never generate it. The electrical resistance of a resistor is measured in ohms. Named after the creator of Ohm's law, the German mathematician and physicist Georg Siemens Ohm. And the symbol for an ohm is the Greek capital letter Omega. The definition of one ohm is the resistance between two points where one volt of applied potential energy will push one ampere of current. To simplify things, we describe 1000 ohms as 1 kilo ohm and describe 1 million ohms as 1 mega ohm with a capitalized M. All resistors have two terminals. A resistor will be shown as one of two symbols. On the left we have the American symbol and on the right we have the international symbol. Resistors come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. The most common found are through hole, but you may also see some surface mount the likes of which are used on printed circuit boards and are very small in size. Variable resistors, known as rheostats or potentiometers, are resistors where you can vary the resistance between a specific range of values by adjusting a center tap between two internal resistors which creates a voltage divider. These are often used for inputs like control knobs that need to be adjustable. Although it doesn't appear so, most resistors show the resistance marked on them. Through hole resistors use a color coding system. The first two bands indicate the most significant digits of the resistor's value. The third band is the weight value, which multiplies the two significant digits by a power of 10. Surface mount resistors usually have three to four characters, numbers or letters printed on top. The third number indicates how many zeros you need to append to the first two numbers. In this example, we see the third number is number one, which indicates we need one zero appended after the first two numbers, the 1 and the 0, giving us 100 ohms. In the second example, 104, the third number, 4, indicates that we need to append four zeros to the remaining numbers, 10. This gives us 100,000 ohms, or 100 kilo ohms. If you're only starting with electronics, you'll be more commonly using the through-hole type resistor. The first two bands indicate the two most significant digits of the resistor's value. The third band is a weight value which multiplies the two significant digits by a power of 10. When decoding the resistor color bands, you should consult a resistor color code table, like the one below. The final band indicates the tolerance of the resistor. This lets you know how much error to allow for, and you can refer to the table once again for values. A resistor's power rating can be checked on the packaging provided or in the datasheet. We can calculate the power rating required by using Ohm's law in the form of power equals current squared by the resistance R. If you know the voltage across the resistor, the power can be calculated by squaring the voltage and dividing it by the resistance R. Next we'll look at how to calculate resistance in series and parallel. When multiple resistors are placed in series, you simply add the resistor values together to get the total resistance. When two resistors are connected in parallel, the total resistance is equal to product over the sum. The resistance of the first resistor multiplied by the second resistor, dividing this total by the sum of the first resistor and the second resistor. If a third or any more resistors are added in parallel, the total inverse resistance is equal to the sum of the inverse of each resistance. The inverse of resistance is called conductance. The conductance of parallel resistors is the sum of each of their conductances, and that's where this formula comes from. Resistors exist in just about every electronic circuit ever made, but here are some examples of some common applications, beginning with current limiting resistors for an LED circuit. Resistors are key to make sure your LEDs don't blow up when the power is applied. When sizing this resistor, you need to look for two characteristic values of the LED, a typical forward voltage and a maximum forward current. The typical forward voltage is the voltage which is required to make the LED light up, and the maximum forward current is the maximum amount of current the LED can withstand. Once you've acquired these two values, you can size up your current limiting resistor with the following equation. The resistance is equal to the voltage source minus the forward voltage 
and dividing that total by the forward current. Here's an example of a voltage source of 9 volts, a forward voltage of 1.5 volts, and a maximum current of 10 milliamps. So let's plug that into our equation. So we have 9 minus 1.5 over 0.1, and that gives us a current limiting resistor size of 750 ohms. Another common use for resistors is a voltage divider circuit. Voltage divider circuits are used to turn large voltages into smaller ones. Using just two resistors in series, an output voltage can be created that's a fraction of the input voltage. Two resistors, R1 and R2, are connected in series and a voltage source, V in, is connected across them. The voltage from V out to ground can be calculated by the formula provided. V out equals R2 divided by the sum of R1 and R2 multiplied by V in. The final application I have for you are pull-up resistors. A pull-up resistor is used when you need to bias a microcontroller's input to a known state. One end of the resistor is connected to the input pin and the other end is connected to a high voltage, usually 5 or 3 volts. Without a pull-up resistor, inputs could be left floating and there's no guarantee a floating pin is either high or low. In the example shown, as the switch is open, the input is pulled high as the current flows through the pull-up resistor from the voltage in. When the switch is closed, the input is pulled low. As the current flows through the path of least resistance from ground through the pull-up resistor to the voltage in, the resistor doesn't need to be any specific value. 10 kilo ohms works quite well for 3.3 and 5 volt circuits, as it doesn't drain much power. I hope you've enjoyed this video, brought to you by Mishmash Labs. Please like and share, and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content. Thanks for watching.